the Terminator. He said he'd be back, and he is back. But sometimes he has to use a stunt double so he doesn't hurt his back. Terminator Genesis is the latest entry in the long-running Terminator franchise, and it starts out in the future where the humans are about to win the war with the machines, but of course if you know the story from the previous movies, the machines have rigged the game by sending a Terminator back in time to kill Sarah Connor before she can give birth to John Connor who will eventually grow up to lead the human resistance. And so John sends Kyle Reese back in time to protect his mother, but when he gets there he realizes things are not as he expected. Much to his surprise, Sarah is already a battle-hardened warrior and has her own Terminator looking after her. So after they meet up, they go through a weird mashup of Terminator 1 and 2 because the timeline is completely fucked at this point. And then they jump ahead to 2017 to stop Skynet, which is now called Genesis because... reasons, from starting Judgment Day and wiping out most of humanity. I was really not looking forward to this one, but you know, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I expected. Although I think I would have liked it more if Paramount hadn't spoiled the entire freaking movie in the trailers. I know everyone's already complained about that, I'm not saying anything new, but it bears repeating, Paramount, what the fuck were you thinking? But despite the studio's best efforts, they didn't quite ruin the movie. It does have some pretty good action sequences. I was a bit worried that the PG-13 rating would hurt the action, but honestly, I didn't notice any problems with that during the action scenes. The only times I really noticed the PG-13 rating were in any scene where there normally would have been nudity if the movie was rated R. There is a fair amount of humor in this movie, more than I expected, really, and for the most part it does work pretty well. There were a couple of exceptions here and there, one that really sticks out in my mind. After Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor jump forward to 2017, they get arrested, because that's what happens when you show up naked on the middle of the 101, and they are taken to jail, and suddenly the movie turns into an episode of Cops. Like, complete with the bad boys theme. What? I really don't know what they were thinking with that scene. It did not fit the movie at all. It felt like something that should be on, like, a Saturday Night Live sketch about this movie. I really like the opening scenes in this movie that show the post-apocalyptic world and the war with the machines. That was all very well done. The 1984 scenes were pretty good for the most part, albeit a little bit bizarre at times, because for many of these scenes, they recreated almost shot for shot scenes from the first movie. And it's not that it looked bad, it actually looked pretty decent, but at times it just felt unnecessary. The special effects were kind of a mixed bag. There is some good stuff in there, like the new Terminator model that's introduced in this movie looks very cool. The movie also recreates both the 1984 Terminator and the 1991 Terminator, and did a pretty good job with both. And there were some moments that did not look good, like the helicopter chase. I don't know what was going on there, but it did not work. You can tell that there are some parts of this movie that were clearly given enough time and money, and on other parts, they took shortcuts. Arnold may be getting old. In fact, people were saying he was too old to play the Terminator back when Terminator 3 came out a decade ago, but you know what? That man can still play the fucking Terminator. He was awesome in this movie. If nothing else, this movie proves what we have known since 1984. That man was born to play the Terminator. And the excuse they came up with in this movie for why he looks older actually works. They, basically, they just said, since his body is surrounded by living tissue, like any other living tissue, it ages. That's it. It's simple, it's effective, it makes sense. If only the rest of the movie was as simple and easy to understand, because, oh... Oh dear. The new timeline that they came up with for this movie is such a convoluted mess, and it's so hard to understand what the fuck is going on at times. It's not even that they're making up the rules as they go along, it's more like they just gave up on having any semblance of rules at all. There's even a scene in this movie where John Connor says as much. Now as far as the cast for this movie, I already mentioned Arnold, he was awesome. And the other major players, you got Jason Clark as John Connor, Emilia Clark as Sarah Connor, and Jai Courtney as Kyle Reese. Now, as far as acting, I think all three of them did an okay job, but I kinda had trouble buying them as these well-established characters. I thought Jason was just okay as John Connor. Emilia 
you know, I didn't really like her at first, but she kind of grew on me as the movie went on. Jai, I thought, was completely miscast. I just did not buy him as Kyle Reese at all. Byung Hun Lee plays the new T-1000, which means he didn't have to do much except just stand there and look menacing, but he did it well. J.K. Simmons also has a part in this movie, and he was great, but he really needed to be in more of the film. His part was just way too small. And then there's Matt Smith, whose character is probably the only thing that the trailer did not spoil. And I'm not going to spoil it here either, but I am going to say... I get the feeling that his part in this movie was originally supposed to be much bigger than it was. Because if you will recall, back when they first announced this movie, he was prominently featured on one of the early posters. But then, after that initial poster, they never mentioned him again. And the first time we see him in this movie is just before Cal Reese goes back in time, and while everyone is standing around the time machine ready to see... Kyle go back, everyone's just kind of looking up at the thing, and the camera just pans around to the crowd, and it stops for a moment on Matt Smith, and it seems like they're trying to suggest that this guy is important for some reason, but we hadn't seen him at all until then, so I'm not sure if there was a big chunk of footage that got cut, or if this was just the clumsiest foreshadowing ever. And like J.K. Simmons, he needed to be in much more of this movie, because I think he only has about five minutes of screen time, if that. Now, I'm sure many people have already mentioned this, but Genesis is such a stupid name. I really don't know why they couldn't have just stuck with Skynet. It hasn't really changed anything, it's just a rebranding, and that's it. It feels like a rebranding for the sake of rebranding. And it's stupid. And speaking of stupid, when Kyle and Sarah go forward in time to try to stop Judgment Day, they arrive the day before. Why would you do that? You have a freaking time machine. You can go anywhere you want and you choose to only give yourself one day. What if something goes wrong? Like it does. I know they have to make it a race against the clock to add drama and whatnot, but surely there's a way to do that without making your characters look stupid. So, final verdict? I wasn't bored. I can say that much. I didn't hate it. I didn't think it was great, but it was okay. I do think it's the best movie in the franchise since Terminator 2, although I admit that's not really saying much. If you have any interest in seeing this, first of all, if you haven't seen any of the trailers, don't. Just don't. Go in cold. You're much better off, because the trailer, like I said, spoils the entire fucking movie. But if you have any interest in seeing it at all, the highest recommendation I could give it is a 2D matinee. It's definitely not worth paying full price, and don't bother with the 3D. The 3D looks fine, but it's not worth the money. And that does it for Terminator Genesis. So until next time, take care.